Hello everybody and welcome to our Blender 3D animation tutorial session. So here we are already part four. Time is flying. We're going through a lot of stuff here. I uh, just want to thank all our partners in this project. So we have the Canada Council for the Arts. We have our three library partners where you can access the IMAX with Blender software installed. So that's the Blue Mountains Public Library, Collingwood Public Library, Wasaga Beach Public Library. So be sure to check out those computer labs. My name is Tom Sternad and thanks again for joining us on this project. So today we will, uh, I'm going to uh, cut over to Leon really quickly here because um, there was, if you joined us last week, uh, um, uh, Leon just uh, stumbled upon kind of a, a, an issue and he's uh, resolved it. So it's always fun to figure out this problem solving and it's always ongoing because I, I have to say like every day I probably spend 10% of, of the work time is problem solving things, right? Figuring things out, data management, problem solving, software management. Uh, problems sometimes there's issues with software and just there's the, there's fixes that are loaded right so it's an ongoing thing so always be sure on that note to you know check out Google check out make sure the software is up to date there's there's fixes that are created almost daily on some software so just kind of a note on that it's always fun but it's a fun process don't get frustrated eventually it comes forward and and we're you know we're, it's it's part of the learning process so here we go here is uh, I'm gonna pass it over to Leon here he is here's Leon Hello, everyone. Thank you, Tom. Uh, yeah, just to, um, adding on to what Tom was saying is definitely um, no matter how many how many years you have experience with uh, a programs or anything else, um, you bound to find problems that you need to problem uh, you need to troubleshoot and you know problem solving. So the difference is like the more you uh, learn the program or learn the uh the programming or anything like that the um the easier it is for you to find out what it is that you're missing or what your uh, the problem is so yeah like tom said don't get to dis don't get discouraged or frustrated then there's always a solution for something and then like worst case scenario you know you can just uh restart your project from the previous save file then you don't have to work from like uh, from scratch again. So anyway, um, let's get into the uh, problem from last week. Well, the last session. Um, if you remember from our last tutorials, like I was trying to do a texture paint. Okay, so and then the basically. I'm gonna color this. Sorry, I. <clears throat> so as you can see, I can fill the color, the um, the mesh of the the um, the object, no problem. But once I start to uh, paint, want to do some painting on the mesh, it's not allowing me to to do so. So now. This is uh, something that has been missed again. Like I remember, I told you guys that. Uh, let's go back to object mode. I remember before that I told you to check the normals of your mesh, right? So if you go to edit mode, your normal need to be for um, uh, going outward, right? So problem is sometimes when you're having like this, is is your normal is backward. So um, that's what the problem is. So I need to, uh, I guess when I was working um, on the um, the object, I clicked, I flipped the normal twice. So instead of just like one time and the, just to make sure the normal looking uh, facing outward, if the normal is actually like, I click it twice, then it's normal going back to, to uh, backward again. So what we need to do is we just go to um, mesh here on the top. So by going to edit mode, you select all, and then go to the mesh, and then go to normal here, and then you just flip it again, right? And then if you go back to your texture paint, and if you want to uh, brush, and there you go, you have, you, are able to do a um, 
to use the brush, right? So that's pretty much it. <laughs> I forgot to do that. My normal, I guess, um, it flipped backward. So that's fixed. And I'm okay with that. So just for the recap, we'll go back to and then color the head as well. So what we need to do, if you remember, if you want to make an, you make an, if you go to, this is the, um, what do you call it again? Um, what's, uh, what's, so if you go to the top here, it's see the UV editor, right? So if you are in the UV editor, uh, right now is uh, in the bunny unwrap one, which is basically for the body, uh, the bunny. So if you click on new image, right? And you can type it, so it's a bunny head. And then we click OK. Now we have a new uh, blank canvas here. And then we go to the object, um, to the bunny head, and then we go to edit mode. And we're going to um, unwrap the heads with Smart UV projects. Make sure the island margin is around one, should be OK, 0.1. And, uh, and then we click OK. And as you can see, it will unwrap your um, blender will unwrap it as fast as they can. Um, it's not optimal if you really want to make a really nice unwrapping, but since we're using a texture paint, we don't really need to worry about the um, the unwrapping of your mesh, which is for me that's a great thing because I'm not very I don't really like unwrapping to be honest, but uh, yeah, so sometimes you have to, but with texture paint, you don't have to do that again. So now it's done. Next thing we have to do is we need to go, sorry, we need to go back to object mode and we need to put a materials on your uh, mesh here, right? If you go to the properties on the right side here, and if you want to click new material and Type it material bunny head. Actually, we have the same material, so no, uh, because the body the body has that red uh, color in the middle, so we don't want to use that. So let's use let's make a new material. Call it bunny head. All right. So. Um, that's good. And then we go to the shader editor here. And then we go to shift A. We're going to add new image texture. Okay. And then you want to go click on the left side on that little icon here. And then go to the bunny head. And then you want to connect the color to the base color. And we go back to the mesh, the object, the head of the bunny, and then we go to texture paint. As you notice that uh, it changed into black. So we'll go to fill, and then we're going to fill it with the same color as the body. And there you go. Um, <clears throat> so that's done. Right, and um, if you go back to object mode, you're probably wondering like, uh, how can I see like if both of them color? So that's when you go to render. You uh, you can go to need the light. Turn on the light, as you can see, that's the color on the same. Let's change the light settings into sun. That's too bright. Let's put the strength into 10 and let's change the angle. Okay. So, as you can see, it has the same color here. So, let's go back to a solid, or you can go to a material preview, and that's then you don't have to worry about the lighting, right? Um, and since it's only a simple colors 
uh, material material preview probably good for you. Now we need to color the um, uh, the eyes, the nose, and the whisker. So let's do that really quickly. All we need to do is uh, go to material properties, and then we want to add new material. Again, you want to name it bunny eyes material and then we don't need to add any of the um, um, image textures or anything like that because we just a simple color we can just change the default default color here and then let's just change it into uh, it's probably uh, it's pretty good all right i'm not gonna try to i'm not going to make any fancy color but i'm so i'm just gonna have the same color with all the whiskers, the nose, uh, the eyes. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna click on this, all these uh, up mesh object, and then I'm gonna click the eyes left. Uh, um, click all the, uh, <clears throat> click all the nose, the nose, the whiskers, and then click the eyes last, and then you wanna um you wanna uh shortcut keys command l and then say link materials that means it's just copying all the materials from um instead of going instead of you uh going one at a time go to bunny uh, eyes and change it like that so that's just a, a quick shortcut for you guys Man, L link materials. Okay, all right. So that's a pretty simple. Uh, now we're done with texturing. Let's go back to the normal layout and let's hide the um, the light here. We don't need it. And this is in perspective view. Okay, now next we need to do is to rig the bunny. Now, there, there are multiple ways to rig the characters, but in this case, right now, I just want the bunny to jump and down. Uh, I'm not doing any fancy movements, so it's not really, um, it's not an optimal rigging. Uh, this is just for uh, purposes for this tutorial uh, we can uh, maybe some days like we i can go deep, deeper into the rigging of the bunny so but right now because we don't have you know a lot of time so my just let's just do a very simple rigging which is we go to if you deselect all you go to shift a and then you want to go to amateur and then single bone. And as you can see, there's a single bone over here. It started here because this is the, the cursor, the 3D cursor is over here, right? So that's okay. We we'll just remove it. I mean, we we'll just move it and then down here. Okay. And next thing we need to do is go to let's just um not height let's just uh, what do you call again <clears throat> selectable i'm just gonna click on disable selection so we not don't have to we don't select it all the time okay so now the the um the bone uh, right now we are in the X-ray mode, right? So if we back to normal mo normal viewing mode, uh, you see the bone is um, uh, got uh, high, uh, it's, it's basically inside the mesh. So what we need to do is we want to bring to the, the the bone property here to the object data property, and you go to viewport, and then you want to click in front. Right, so now no matter which side 
you're moving your bone, right? And it will always stay in the front. That means like you, it's not going to be um, um, obscured by the, uh, the the mesh. So if you uncheck this options, you can't see it because it is inside the mesh, right? So that's why I'm gonna have that in front. All right. So next, what we need to do, we go to edit mode, right? And then we want to, <clears throat> you know what? Uh, okay, let's let's recap back here. I'm just going to make it simple so we're not going to get too confused about it. So I'm going to go to in front and then bring bring it down. Mm, let's go more down here. And then go to edit mode. And we'll just make, and then just extrude another bone out. Yeah, let's um, actually just extrude all the way here. Yeah, okay, and then extrude here. Now, uh, I will tell you what we, the reason why I'm doing this. So, let's, All right, so that is good. And now what we're going to do next is going back to the bone, the object data property, right? And we want to go to display as, right now is display as octa, octahedral, right? That's the shape of this bone right now. So we want to change that into a B bone, right? If you remember the uh, tutorial from the eggs, that's exactly what we're going to do is we're just going to make a bendy bone for uh, the bunny and just uh, and then try to just squeeze and, um, uh, squash and stretch when we're animating the bunny. So nothing fancy. All right, so let's go back to edit mode. <clears throat> And then uh, Control Alt S to resize the top bone. Control Alt S and then resize the bottom bone. And then in the middle bone here, which is going to be our bendy bone, we want to go to the bone properties, and we want to go to bendy bones. And then the segments here. There's on the right side um, the B bone. We want to put it like. I would say about 10 will be okay. You don't need to be too much. Um, <clears throat> um, and then we want to go to the top bone here. And if we press Alt P and we want to clear the parents, now Alt P and disconnect the bone, right? So this bone is not connecting to this bone. Now, next we need to do is we're going to go to pose mode here on the top, right? And we wanna click the top. Actually, before we do that, let's name this. Uh, let's go to edit mode. Let's name this bone, call it top. Call it middle and then call it um, bottom. Um, 
and then we'll just do and then go back to post mode and then click the top one and then just select the middle one and you're going to control shift c and then that will give you the option for constraint and you want to click the stretch too okay so if you don't remember the um the shortcut key all you need to do is just go to um this at the bottom here there's a bone constraint property so essentially that's what you need to add all right it's just a shortcut keys to um, constraints so now as you can see the bone is bending which is great but if you rotate the bone it doesn't do anything right so let's go back to the bone property and then we go to the middle bone and then that start handle here and at the bottom here it say automatic you want to change that into absolute and then change that into a uh, custom start bottom and then the end handle you will start absolute as well and then select the top so now as you can see and when you're rotating it works so it works just fine all right so that's all good now we just need to um go back to object mode and this is a nerve tabs so i'm not sure if i show you how to do this but let's not worry about that right now so i want to actually uh, change this and then i'm going to convert it into a mesh uh, because this is like a curve and a curve is it's not a it's a curve is basically just one single point that you can manipulate it's a one single line but it's uh when it's a mesh you can have multiple uh points like a vertex point that you can manipulate but you can't do that with curves so there's there's a reason why you do certain things like hair you can do it with curves uh, with curve it is probably easier than if you need to model it with um, just a normal mesh model <clears throat> but um since the hair is a very loose and um, unorganized and using a, a curve modeling is better. So, but that's a whole other subject. Okay, anyway, uh, convert this into mesh. I'm gonna do that same thing, convert this into mesh. Okay. <clears throat> uh, let's... Next, we need to do is go to object mode, and then we need to be able to select it. So head sculpt and the main body. And the head sculpt. That's the main body. No, oh, yeah, you can select that. And this is what it says again. Oh, the bunny head. Yeah. There you go. All right. So let's continue on. Let's um, attach the bone into the mesh. And all, what you need to do is click all the um, the objects and then click the bones, the armature next. And then you want to do command P with automatic weight here and set parent to and with automatic weight. There you go. And now if we go to post mode, and here we go, that the body is moving, but the eyes and nose and the whisker is not following. So, what we need to do is we need to because it's a separate object, right? All these, 
the whisker, the eyes, and the nose are separate objects from the body. So we, we need to, unfortunately, we need to um, set the parents uh, individually. So let's put the bones and put the property, uncheck the middle, uncheck the in front. So I'm gonna click the eyes, the nose, and all the whisker, and then I'm gonna click the armchair, drop E with automatic weights. Let's see. Uh, let's see if that works. Yeah. As you can see, that's falling, right? Again, like you can't do extreme because as you can see, you get like some crease here. That's this is where the um um what do you call it again? Uh, weight painting needs to be happening uh, once you when you're rigging a character. <clears throat> That's a whole new uh, topic. It's very involved, and it's also like um, rigging in general is a very um, um, people you, uh, will as they go along with their journey in blender they will find out what they like to focus on so <clears throat> excuse me so they can focus on uh, modeling or animation and rigging texturing so modeling and texturing usually like go together but um, rigging is a whole new like um is a broad way of um, I'm not sure what to call it. It's just it, it's a broad subject, so is it's very difficult to just to be good at everything in Blender, right? So if you're really good at rigging, you're not necessarily good at animation or modeling, and that's okay, right? But but um, usually what people combine the two, like they good with modeling and when rigging, but not good with animations. They combine that they're good with modeling and animations, but not as good as rigging. So it's, you know, you'll find out as you keep working your way um, on the um, journey in Blender. So now is rigged, right? So we're all good. We can start animating the, um, the bunny here. Uh, Next thing we know, we want to open the timeline here. Or we can go to animations. There we go. And this, basically, this is a camera. This is a dope sheet here. And then this is a 3D uh, space. So the camera, this is what you will see. When you once you render your animation, this is the um, the the uh, the, <clears throat> the one that you will see in the final product. As you can see, it's not properly um, the camera is not properly established. So let's go to view, and then go lock to 3D cursor. So that allow me to um, wait camera to view. So not it's locked camera to view. Uh, you want to check that. That's basically um, you can set the camera to behave like you do at the three D space, right? So and there you go. Once you're done setting up your camera view you generally want to lock it again. So if you uncheck this, the camera to view, like you can't do the um, the rotation anymore. As you can see, it's automatically jumped to like a 3D space and you don't want to do that. You press zero, go back, non-path zero. That will bring you back to the camera view, right? You can zoom, you can even zoom out and zoom in, right? It's, as you can see, the camera is all like, already attached there so that's once you have the camera angle set that leave it as is unless you need to animate the camera later on 
so next is we're going to figure out how many frames we're going to um, um, have for this jump, right? I'm just gonna do a simple jump animations for this bunny, nothing fancy. So let's bring this bone property, bring it in front so we can see it. Um, let's, right now we get start at one, right? And then we uh, end at 250. So basically the animation will start at one when you play it and then it will end at 250 frames. Um, I think that's a little bit too much. So let's make that into, I would say 50 frame for now. There you go. So now if you have the liquor at the bottom here, you can stretch it and you can stretch it and you can make it, you can zoom into it. <clears throat> now, the um, I like to set the rest pose here on zero. So if I need to copy the the original anime um, pose for the the bunny, I usually have it and just copy and paste. And then there's another way of doing it to reset the pose. I forget what they call it. Oh yeah, so Control A. You know you can actually assign. You can apply this uh, as a selected rest pose. So the rest pose is is basically the pose that you want to be your characters to be at the very beginning. And let's say you start animating your characters, uh, character, uh, and then you figure out that like mm, that's not exactly what I want. I want to characters to just go back to the normal pose that I have. Then you can just like apply pose. Apply, apply pose as press pose, right? And then you can just um, just select just select on it, and it will give you the um, uh, it will take the pose back to normal. So that's so a. Apply pose as rest pose. Okay, so like pose positions. So let's say if I move this down like that, if I go to rest positions, it will go back to normal, right? So that's what the rest positions is. Okay, so rest positions, go to number one. And then I want to have, um, and I'm gonna ask control A, select all. And then I'm going to press I to insert keyframe. <clears throat> and the keyframe here, uh, you need to figure out what movements you will give to all this um, bones here, right? Because let's just see really quick. Click on the top, you wanna move. Oh, um, let's go to post positions. Okay, yeah. So we, want to be able to rotate so that means we want to put a keyframe of rotation we want to be able to move the uh, bones that means that's location what we don't want is scaling right i mean sometimes you do need to scale to get like the really um to change the shape but that's not often being used so generally for like uh, keyframes, you just use the location and rotation. So that's that. Go back to rest positions, and then I'm gonna click all, and then I'm gonna click I 
and then I'm going to select keyframe rotations on location and rotation here. And as you can see, I have keyframes selected and start at frame one here. Perfect. And so I'm not sure why I'm not doing that, but anyway, let's uh, collect all location rotations. Okay, so we got everything here, and then the next things we want to continue to make a keyframe is let's say we want the character to bend down. So squash down, so maybe in frame eight. Oh, before that, there's an alt auto keying here. That's also like a very, um, once you start animating, it's very useful. So you want to click on it to turn it on. And so once we start moving the bone, it will automatically give you all the rotations, I mean, uh, the keyframes that you need it, right? <clears throat> so now we squash on eight, frame eight, and then on frame 12, we want to have him jump. So we're going to go up, you go, squash, a stretch, and then we'll bring the bottom one. So it's 12 here. As you can see, we want this the same. We end up, so we got. If you see the uh, camera view on the left here, um, the rabbit is this is a little bit off screen. So don't worry about that right now. We can animate the uh, camera later on. But let's get this animation is done first for the rabbit jumping. Shoot. And then maybe go to 14. <clears throat> okay, so that's good. And then we want to have like a hold here and then just like a slow. Maybe for uh, 20. Okay, so rotations, bring it to frame 20. Eh, let's have the bottom one still squashing. You know what? Let's delete all that keyframe and let's make a new keyframe. Let's see. All right, so that's good. And then go to frame 24, where it's going to start going down. And uh, frame twenty six. We want to we want him to go down where he started. Uh, so basically, before we do that, I usually do 
is go to object modes. <clears throat> and then I want to create a um, plane. And bring it bottom here and then just sweet size that. Okay, so you have the um, the ground for the rabbit to jump. And you don't want to be able to select the ground. So now let's go back to the rabbit again. Let's finish this animation. Okay, so we got the jump and then now the rabbit is going down, right? And then on frame 26, we want him to be on the ground again. As you can see, he's not really on the ground. Right, so the best way to do it is to select the keyframe on the first, and then command C, command V to copy it. Right, and then you want, so that means the rabbit is in the ground, and then you wanna have the rabbit go squash a little bit more here before it settle. <clears throat> to let's say on frame 30, it will go back to normal. Okay, so this is the final post. There you go, not too bad. All right, so now what we wanna do is we wanna animate the uh, camera really quickly. Okay, so let's go to camera. <clears throat> uh, we want to select the camera. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. My throat has been really dry lately. <laughs> okay, so we have the camera selected. Let's, um, let's camera. Oh, uh, go to uh, object mode and select the camera. And then, as you can, the reason why I need to select the camera is so you, I can actually make a keyframe, right? Location. We don't need rotation because we just need the camera to go up and down. And then all the key and go to the camera, lock camera to view, right? And then we're going to have what well, a camera need to follow the rabbit. We'll start from frame eight here. Frame eight here, and then we're gonna go up to frame 16, and we're just gonna sixteen and just bring it up. Like that following and then gonna go back to from 28 we just gonna pace as you can see it's just following but it's kind of behind here so let's bring it that's because also the stretching There you go. All right, so that's done. Um, yeah, then like, I mean, we got the um, the rabbit uh, animated. So, and uh, it's pretty much done. We just don't really uh, want to have any uh, complicated uh, animations for this rabbit right now. And what I'm going to do is next time is I'm going to um, 
we're going to render the rabbit and render the eggs. <clears throat> and then we're going to combine both of them together in, uh, in, uh, uh, in what do you call it again, in Blender uh, assembling. So that's kind of like the, the after effects in Blender. So, or the uh, Premiere. So you render separate images and then you um, put them together and then let's put it on a, on a, and so we going to composite everything into one single video, right? Then we can render that video and we can uh, in the proper format that you need it for like your Instagram or your TikTok, uh, mm -hmm. any social media that you want to upload your animation. So that's the next one we are uh, going to do. And I've, uh, but for today, I think that's pretty much what we have here is pretty much done. We don't have anything, you know, um, other fancy movement for the rabbit to do. So if you go to uh, material preview, And it goes back to black again. Again, it's, uh, it's one of those things that you not sure why is doing that. Render. Okay, so the armature. So I'm not sure why is it. Uh, so that's an easy fix. We go to texture paint and right and then just go we'll just go to color just change the color um the same thing with the body touch your paint color and then I'm going to put uh, I'm going to put a brush and color palette So that's done. Go to object modes, make sure we select all this. And then go to the bunny eyes. Not sure why it's the material is still there, but <laughs> not sure why it's not showing up. Go to Shader Editor. See, maybe we need to refresh that. Oh, the material page. Excuse me. The material preview is there, but it's not rendering. Oh no, it does. It's rendered. Yeah, sorry about that. Anyway, so uh, it's done now. So if you um, if you play it, is you get your bunny render there, right? So that's pretty cool. Was some stretch, nothing new, and then I have the uh, render in EV, so it's playing almost real time with the proper texture paint that you have, right? Anyway, so that's that's it for today. I just want to show you 
what I mean about like a more complicated reading. So this is the one that I did. So let's just save this. You can go to um, real quick to save that. Yeah, as you can see, this is the rigging is <clears throat> is a bit more uh, involved, right? But you got ex um, extra movements in here, right? You can actually have the uh, the arms. You can have the, uh, the ears moving separately, right? And the body separate. And you can have the uh, the legs. So this is a more uh, involved <laughs> rigging uh, that that I made with uh, with the bendy bones. So it's obviously um, I can you know I can go through this um, someday. But um, right now, like the principle is the same, right? Um, what the bendy bones that I had that I started with the other character, uh, the other bunny, right? With the, the one that jump and squats. But it's just have more bones that you <laughs> piece together in order to make um, a more um, complete rigging of the character anyway so <clears throat> hopefully uh you learned something about the whole process today let me know if you have any questions and please send an email to me <clears throat> sorry just kind of stuck anyway so thank you very much for coming and watching today and hopefully you have a great day <clears throat> Perfect. Thanks, Leon. Leon. Just gonna switch over here. Um, no, it's always a fantastic session. So, uh, what uh, uh, there is a so we're we're gonna have one more of these sessions. Just want to let everyone know. So we have one more session coming up uh, in June, and then we want to have our final wrap up session. Uh, that we want. We're hoping that we can then see what everyone's been working on and and how their actual renditions or or whatever they've come up with so far it'd be nice to see the projects kind of uh you know work in progress finished anything that you want to share that's that's what we'll have at the uh, uh i think that's like the third week of june but we do have another one uh coming up so part five we're going to get into the finals um if you've missed any of these you can email me tom at tbmcs.ca and i can send you an email with um uh, the links to the past workshops and uh, we do have them listed so if you sign up let's say you sign up for part today or you you know you sign up for the next one i have them all listed so you can go back and watch all of these to get, get up to date so if you join us today for the first time uh don't worry you can still go back and watch the other one so if you've just you know followed along uh you can get back into uh into all the sessions with uh, with leon so that's a, a good the good thing to know so just want to thank all our partners in this project so we have the canada council for the arts and we have our library partners we have the blue mountains public library collingwood public library and the Wasaga Beach Public Library. So at these libraries, you can access the IMAX, our digital arts computer lab. So we have at least uh, two IMAX at each library. Collingwood Public Library has four now. So these computer labs, you can access and then Blender's loaded on there as well. So it's installed, you can just come and work on your, your, your work there as well. So don't worry if you don't have, um, you know, if, if you don't wanna have it on your own computer, you don't have a fast computer, you don't have, you know, something older, or you just have like an iPad uh, and you wanna use Blender, that's why we have these computer stations there. So do check it out. Thanks again to Leon for uh, taking the time to do this. And we hope that we'll see you on the, on the fifth one and we're looking forward to seeing your final projects as well. So that's it for now. Have a great rest of the, the day and weekend and talk to you soon. Take care.